So you're hiding in the pantry? <laughs> um, I wasn't actually sure if uh, there's alcohol in here. Uh, in the pantry, no. The alcohol closet is over here. Oh, okay. yeah, Zol wouldn't, Zol wouldn't be here anymore. He'd be outside drinking like King of Little Style. Yep. There is alcohol in the kitchen, but it's not like quality alcohol. It's not like spirits and stuff like that. It's more just cooking wine and stuff like that. Yeah, this cabin on the bottom left of the living room is the one that has all the booze in it. Awesome. Uh, essentially, Deep just wanted to throw drinks in my Yeah, you grab a drink and you see Zal outside the window. Do you make yourself a strong drink or? Uh, can I roll for me? <laughs> Do what? Well, anyone can make themselves a strong drink in theory. <laughs> All you gotta do is pour a bunch of alcohol in it. It's just about how much you put in. <laughs> it's a question of do you want it to taste good or that, that's real. <laughs> are you looking to get drunk or are you just looking to have like a, a nightcap? Looking to get drunk yes. Okay. Very well. You go over to the liquor cabinet and begin making yourself a rather simple drink. It's simply a gin and tonic, except uh, one, more of one than the other. Too much gin, not enough tonic. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> no, gin's an alcoholic one, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. As someone who doesn't drink very often, I think I'm right. Yes. Yeah, so you make yourself a really strong gin and tonic. Or I guess you just grab the bottle of vodka, take your pick. Um, And you head outside to go to Taco Zoll, because you can see him like, literally right there, out the, win <laughs> out the window of the front door. Yeah, you go over to him, and he's sort of chilling, and he's, like, really intensely focusing on this, like, glass he's holding. Like, staring really hard at it. Like, almost glaring. And then, as you approach, he hears you, and he, like, turns his attention away from him for a sec. No way. Don't mind me, I'm just, uh, trying to exert my will on this. <laughs> he's staring at the glass he's holding. What a manly thing to do. <laughs> exactly. Why are you staring at the glass? I saw Vincent doing it earlier. He was able to, like, make the glass cold. And then I asked him how I did it, and he's like, oh, I just sort of uh, use my will to do it. So I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to see if I can do that. It's not, it's not cooling up. If it is, I ain't seen no frost on it yet, so... I'm around real hard. Are you just experimenting? If I'm being honest, I'm just thinking cold. Cold, 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 cold a lot and staring at it. I don't know if it's working, though. But I don't think it would. Unless maybe he's got something up his sleeve that he doesn't talk about. I mean, he's sort of like a very not, so I imagine he probably does, but he told me that that, uh, you know, there are people that can't do this sort of shit. I don't know if it's working, though, so. He, he stops staring at it, adjusts his grip on it, and then takes a drink of it. Uh, crazy not, though, huh? Yeah, I needed a drink. Sure, I'll drink to that. <laughs> He holds up his glass to, like, clink against. Can toast... I not? Hmm? What did you see? Uh, I saw... Uh... <sighs> it was alright, it was just really weird. Uh, I saw, uh, like a bar. Surprise, surprise, right? I saw a bar in the middle, like, a sort of like a... Which call them a hole in the wall sort of bar, you know, like you gotta like sort of know what's there. It's, it was like in an alleyway, right? And wherever this place was, it smelled like so much. I had a bad time there. It smelled like real nasty trash and uh, piss and stuff like that. 
right? This this alley where the I think it's the alley where this uh, bar was located in. I woke up, I, my my vision. I was in the bar. All right, I was in the bar, and I, you know, tried to, or I guess the person I was, well, I don't know, man. It was the the vision I saw. The person left, entered into the alley, smelled fucking disgusting. I mean, the bar smelled like a bunch of smoke, I'm going to be honest, so I guess not much better, but, uh, you know, they, they went down the alley to, uh, alleviate themselves, and then I heard something above, and from the perspective, I looked up, and I saw just a bunch of darkness, it was, it was night time, saw nothing, but, you know, well, maybe not nothing, nothing. That's, there's like a little bit of torchlight illuminating the middle of the alley and stuff like that. And a lot of these um, sacks that are around, uh, like like a little like, well, like flower sacks, but like bigger, made of like something shiny. I know. Walked past that, tried to take a piss, heard noise above me, looked up, saw basically nothing, like some brickwork, I guess. I don't know. But then the vision just cut. Right? That's where that's where my not vision like the dream, vision like the vision. He, he gestured at his eyes. Oh. Yeah, like it's like so stop. Like black, you know, nothing, right? Right. Then I get another another vision. Another perspective. He gestures at his eyes again, another perspective. And it's looking looking down that same alley. It's all, uh, sort of like what he begins to look around. Where the fuck you go? Sort, sort of like what Dilbert's got. That was like, um, spectacles, glasses. So it's like looking through that, or something like that, right? Also, where the fuck did Dilbert go? Where did Tolis go? Oh no! He <laughs> keep flipping his fucking toke. He's looking around, bro. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh man, I was uh, I was sort of trying to make sure Tolls and Delvin didn't interact too much, but uh, <laughs> he shows up his his glass of alcohol. Here's to you, Delvin. Good luck. <laughs> Take a drink. Ah. <laughs> uh. Cheers to them. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cheers to them. Uh, those two gonna need the help. Anyways, uh, back back to what that my vision. Uh, so I saw from this perspective, I was going down the alley. Except now it wasn't just the smell of like dis- extra disgusting trash and piss and stuff like that. There was smell of blood, guts, and the person, the perspective I was looking through, crouched down and began examining this ripped up person. I mean, I was not much left. I'm being you honest. Recognize that person? Well, nah, um, no, no one I ever met. I mean, it wasn't much. Also, wasn't too recognizable. It's like, right? It's sort of like watching. I don't know. I describe it. Uh, it's like uh, a horror movie. Oh. I was to say, what the fuck's a movie? <laughs> I was gonna. You can say horror story. You can say horror story. Let's do it. Horror story, yeah. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. It's like seeing like someone get popped open, like like a grape or something. Like you know how you squeeze a grape real hard and then you just go like that, sort of like that. Like there were there's not much left on them. And who this perspective I was looking through was examining what was left there, and it saw uh, something on the. Uh, what you call it? The, this part. He gestures at like the middle of his like back, the uh, the sp- spine, spine. There's something on the spine, like a little carving on the bone. On all of it, all of this. He runs his finger up and down his back. Some sort of uh, marks or symbols or some such. Yeah. Honestly, if that's where that vision ended, I was a uh, like. 
I would say that was a bad one. But uh, I, I don't know. This. Well, what's up? Did it end like that? Just cut off? No, no. There's a little bit more. Uh, when the pr this, I was looking around and and to grab like a like a torch or some a really small one, but like size of like maybe your hand, maybe longer. It's like like that, like that mat, like that light magic that people do, something like that. Got up it's like a bullseye lantern. Saw like this trail of blood, and there's this sense of uh, success of uh, I want to say predation because that makes it sound like it's hunting some, but I guess Sora was hunting some, something like that. And this annoyance, this like anger, sense of purpose. I heard some more boot steps behind me, but that sort of sensation I left with that's what made it, made it a good one for me. To be honest, it kind of sound like it was a bad sensation. I can get why I see it that way, but uh, I don't know. I know most people don't see anger as like a good thing or whatever, but I don't know. I think anger is, uh, is a tool. It's a tool that even some country hicks like me can use. You don't need to be highborn to be angry. It ain't exclusive to lowborn neither. Gives a oh. sense of focus. You can't think of nothing else except the thing that annoys you. I mean, that's not that that's not good necessarily. That's like a bit of an obsession. But when you can temper yourself on it, control it, it's very valuable. So while I was trying to see if this uh, glass thing, what's <laughs> with the glass? For holding this glass up was the thing I can do. But uh, guess not. See if it was something anyone could do. Yeah. This is what I like about you, Zo. You're always thinking of the brighter side. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, dude, but I appreciate it. And I appreciate that you can appreciate me. And I appreciate that I don't got to hide what I got to say around you, too. I'm glad that you feel safe enough to and comfortable around me. <laughs> you make it pretty easy. I uh, know. Remember, uh, Vasa and I were talking about that. A little while ago. Well, more than a little while ago. I guess he was just looking out for you and stuff like that. Can't... Can't fault him for nothing or anything. But yeah, I just... You're always, uh... You're not really a judgmental sort, are you? Seems I... like you sort of catch what... We're all saying and never really judge us too harshly or judge us at all for it. It's almost you're accepted. I think that's why I find it so easy to talk with you. Thank you for saying that, but I don't, I didn't really think I'd give off that vibe. Yeah. For most I mean, of my life, mm -hmm. I just, I'm always more reserved, so. Well, that's why a reserved girl like you gets a loud mouth like me and then it all bounces out. Yeah, I, I guess that works in my favor. <laughs> if you ever need me to shut up, just let me know. Uh, 
Uh, I know we didn't really get much of a win in earlier today with that deal, but... Parties like this, times like this, uh, can't help but feel like we're doing something right. I'm sure we are. Sure, because I would disagree. Just like... I mean... There's only so much we can do. And... Like I mentioned before... You always see the good in things, so... Maybe Sai just needs to see the good in things too. Eh, uh, I'm sure she does, and she just don't say it, and then, let me tell you, I, I see point of the bad things. I just think, uh, I think Kasai and I and all y'all and everyone really got different levels of tolerance on what's bad. Right, black. Black Anushka dealing with Amber. She's a fellow Twinsian. We ain't that good at talking. That's probably real bad for her right now. But if she were to get hit by a club or something, she probably would rather take hit and hit by a club and try to negotiate with Amber. Right? It's like that. We all got different different levels of what we can take and can't take. So. I ain't trying to see the brightest side of things, dude. I just think uh, there's a lot worse shit out there. I can drink the bell. And then Cheers. I think yeah. <laughs> Drink. Hey, why don't you make me a con save? You're trying to get drunk. <laughs> you guys have been drinking a good bit. Two, two fair guys didn't have fail, dinner. Fail. <laughs> fail. Fail. <laughs> fail. Do it. <laughs> I mean, you could just choose to fail if you want to get it done. Oh, it don't work that badly, but. <laughs> okay. Barely succeeding. Barely. <laughs> No! <laughs> My boy, the DC was 12! And yet... Oh and god, yet. it's wine! It He's drinking wine! wine. He's drinking oh, wine! <laughs> Trying to make chilled wine and he failed! He's drinking wine! Ugh. Man. Oh god, a cabaret. This is... This is good shit. You're good shit. Everyone here, good, good shit. Do you need to sit down? Nah, I'm fine. He's like slightly teetering back and forth. Yeah, maybe I'm, you should. I'm, no, no, I'm fine. No, no, no. I, I, I even drink a glass of this. Yeah, I'm fine. That's exactly what happened last time too. <laughs> Uh, um, I'm sure uh, you've eaten before, correct? Yeah, of course. Have that delicious dinner that Saz Vanna made and all the fucking Spectre servants. That shit's still weird. I I'm, I gotta say, like, I, it's really cool that like Owen can summon like servants, ghost servants or whatever. Yeah. But that shit's kind of creepy. But, yeah, I had good dinner. Well, as long as you have food in your stomach. Yeah, you... I'll be fine. Good. Ugh, starting to sound like my cousin. We're all like that. I hope I don't remind you too much of your cousin. I mean, you're looking out for people, so I guess uh, that's, like, a good thing. Honestly, Blair's like that, too. Like, it's, like, it's super <laughs> obvious. D before you ask, no, Blair and I ain't cousins. That'd be fucking weird. That would be weird. I haven't got the white hair to boast for it. Honestly, you might be able to pass off as Blair's cousin more than me. I make another con save. Okay, yeah, he's able to maintain standing up. Nice. 
A 19, let's go. Blair, he he gets a thought in his hand. He like he counts on like his free hand, like one two th five, like one two three four five, and then again one two three four five, which makes it obviously six to ten. He's like Blair, Dillwyn, Altani, Afrin. I guess I sort of have Lena, Lawnen, all the free marchers. He even's counting different people, unincluding you guys and unincluding uh, the original Delta Corps. So. Vaso, America, Tolis. The old scenes. We met a lot of people. Like a lot of people. I don't know if I like that or not. Why is that? Uh, there's a there's a old there's a little twinsy insane. Too many rowers sinks the boat. I've never heard that. That's fair. I mean, you guys probably have stirred a craft <laughs> out in Sensei, so that's probably why. <laughs> but now the twins, now you ain't got, you know, best lumber and stuff like that. But, you know, the, the point of it is, you know, too many people isn't always a good thing. And if I'm if I'm being honest, Zach, I, I'm happy we got a lot of friends and all that, but that's just more friends I get in the way of you know, getting harped away. So. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think I can handle losing people that well. I know where you're coming from. If we end up losing someone in our group, it would be just too hard for anyone to handle them. I mean, we had a lot of close calls already, and you know, lost Brendan and stuff like that. I mean, don't get me wrong, Brendan and I weren't super close, but it just feels bad. But now, like with all this, I don't know. I guess uh Guess I just have to take the roles as they come. And your guys too, huh? I suppose me and Sajar got that. He seems he says like leaning and looking over towards Sajar's direction. So we share. Although uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's in the best state of mind right now for it. Yeah, it's a possibility. Is not <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> Straight from the source. First hand account. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't uh, gold him. Yeah, don't worry. I'll pick up the slack. Yeah, I think, I think Vaso's getting uh, getting his own grip on things, and I'm sure Blair can. I mean, she was fine with a broken arm or something, right? So that's <laughs> sure she'll be fine. Alright, I'm sitting down. Uh, my legs are hurting. Uh, the sits down next to him. Yeah, the two of you sit down next to each other. Enjoy your drinks. Which, by the way, make me another cost save. DC has increased to 14 this time! <laughs> you can't do that! Yes, I can. The more alcohol you drink, the worse it gets. So, speaking from experience, that's illegal. All right, well, you're fine. <laughs> Dang. Um. Yeah, so you sit down next to Zal, and the two of you just sort of chill and comfortable, quiet for a few moments. We should go on a picnic sometime. 
something like this, except actual food and such. That would be lovely. If I'm being honest with you, I ain't ever been on a picnic. I just heard Voss talk about it once. Has he... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so sad. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> just laughing. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm just, I was like, oh, in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't gotta give me that look. Come on. I will take you on the best picnic day ever. <laughs> How old you two at? You you set the standard now. Try, try to match. Try to keep up. I'm so. Sorry, one second. All good. Sorry, I had to cough for a sec. <laughs> That's a very fair reason. So yeah, talk to a picnic date. Ooh la la. Fortunately, you know what the concept of a picnic is and entails, unlike Zol. To be fair, if you went on a picnic in the Twins... Uh, you know, it'd probably kinda... be bad. It'd probably be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if they could picnic in Florida, they could picnic in the Twins. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was fair. <laughs> Same thing, really. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> <laughs> she said, like, the picnic has to just be like traditional. Like maybe we can go out and fight. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> here's the thing, and here's the beauty that you are in right now. Any standard you set will probably be better than what he's had before. You can set the bar you really low, balls. so every time you just <laughs> top yourself. <Yeah. laughs> this time I brought a basket. Holy shit. You can do that? <laughs> Are we allowed to do that? <laughs> Is that legal? <laughs> yeah, I'm find those houses to find out. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking warden from before is just like, hey, you can't bring a basket out here. Has he had this, is, this is this a strict no basket zone, I'll have you know? <laughs> yeah, this this park it doesn't allow baskets oh. specific. <laughs> You, you could bring barrels, that's it. Oh, fucking <laughs> barrels. <laughs> yeah, you roll them up and have your food in them. And, and there's no, no man, other so. receptacle that you could possibly have other than a basket or a barrel. Yeah, there's no other option. There's no other containers in the world. No, <laughs> we have a... We saw the toys. <laughs> no mayonnaise, though? We had an incident a few years back? <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to outrun it in some sort of bug creature. It's crazy. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, so, is there anything else you want to speak with Zol about? <laughs> no. Then you guys enjoy each other's pleasant company. Um, roll me one last con save to see if you get drunk or not. The DC is now 16. And in honor of you, I cracked open <laughs> this um, beer. This uh, It's not a, a strong beer, it's like a peach like cocktail beer. A 16 exact! Let's go! You're cho you're free to choose to fail it if you want to get drunk, though. But it's up to you. Uh, Zol is definitely uh, drunk. Yeah, I'm gonna fail. You both get drunk together, which is the best way to get drunk. Getting drunk alone is very, very sad. Speaking from observation and experience, it is always good to drink with friends. Or better, And confirm. Or better. So... Let's switch gears then, shall we? Actually, actually no, we, no, we won't switch gears yet. Crash, D, roll me D one hundred. Yeah. 
Ooh, let's go. It's the same as Zal's can't save. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you and Zal are enjoying each other's company and getting more and more drunk, he eventually does begin, like, dozing off. Not because you're boring, but because it's been a long day and alcohol do is a depressant, chemically. Uh, so it's definitely having its toll. And this fucking wine, man, he gets through half the bottle by himself. What a weirdo. What a weirdo. Something interesting happens as he begins dozing off and sort of like sleeping on you like he like rests his head against your shoulder right as he's dozing off or has dozed off i guess at this point you know kebab does like emerge out of the house and just sort of like see the two of you sitting on the ground chilling there and then he also sits down and chills there and just sort of like nestles his head on the ground against your like leg and your side on the ground so you can almost use kebab's head as like an armrest in a way yeah That's you're all sweet. comfy big comfort but Bob has claimed the door but kebab has claimed you guys will have to edge around <laughs> kebab in order to get inside sorry That's a good i'm job. sorry kebab's not the, that's oh. a good wolf. I'm sorry. It is a good wolf. It is a good wolf. Um, <clears throat> as like you know, you're all just sort of showing there. You sort of get this sensation, this sort of feeling beyond the comfort that you ex like are feeling currently with being nestled between Zal and Kebab. I guess there's this sort of how to say connection that you're feeling with Zal. And I don't mean like necessarily a romantic one. I mean like a more mm, synergistic one. A more con like, which I know isn't really great for describing a connection. No shit. Um, to put it in video game terms, your rapport with him is deepened. You have plus one social film. But in terms of in character, you guys are already pretty close, but there's definitely a feeling there that you and Zal don't share a mind, but are in tune with one another. And as this sort of realization slowly dawns upon you, you can see him slightly glowing out of the corner of your eye and you turn to look at him and you see that the parts of his gear which have like rune on them are very very faintly glowing all the runes and in this sort of like glitch in the matrix sort of way you note that him and kebab are breathing and exhaling simultaneously with one another and in a very similar manner, like big inhale, nasal inhale, big <laughs> nasal exhale, almost as if kebab was all or the other way around. Despite their quite queer physiological differences. So there you have it. Something will arrive from that um, okay. in due time. <laughs> I will say, uh, just from full transparency and also might help us remember it, all of us in theory, but other people are not obligated to do so. In due time, you and Zal can get a combo move in, in like a fight or something. Because you two share that connection with one another. So fighting alongside one another is one thing. Being in very deep unison and sync with one another is something else entirely. Right? So in due time, you and Zol will get a combo move if, you know, you maintain and deepen your relations. So that's fun. I wrote it in my notes. Thank you very much. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. Um, I will say, Ooh. Owen and I apparently have similar-ish ideas on this, that or Jacob and I, I guess, I don't know. Uh, because 
Do you guys remember what Deet's Pursuant Reverie Source is? I'll take the uh, science as a no. <laughs> no. That's not my head, no. Some hunter-looking fella? Yeah, correct. A hunter. Um, I guess not, I guess lord. From the Conclave of Beasts. Right, there are multiple Conclaves out there. There's a Conclave of Beasts, there's a Conclave of Blood. Can't imagine who's related to the Conclave of Blood. Anyways. Guess we'll never know. So, that's sort of where Kebab fits into the Pursuant Reverie. That's why Deed has Kebab. So, um... D has a connection, a deeper connection with animals than most people. What type of barbarian is all? Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 so that's a, a not a big, it's relatively big, but that is a reason why Zol feels so at peace with you. Because you're something of a, a beast master. Not in that way, no one fucking make it weird. I yeah. wasn't thinking of that. <laughs> Good. You're the one making it weird. Keep your mind up, buddy. Are you yeah, the master your of your own domain? Don't, I look at the time where you guys went uh, smash or pass on a beholder. No. I think it was not I, did. I and you guys are in on that conversation. Oh, well, not D or a dorky. So she's she's queer, and I think Fred wasn't there. So you, so you guys are queer. <laughs> Yeah, but the environment, oh, listen, the environment was set for that, alright? The environment's not set for that here, at least I hope. <laughs> I have my doubts of you guys. <laughs> so, let's switch gears on. I am justified in my lack of faith, thank you very much. Let's switch gears. So, uh, Sajar, you want to go talk with Paula? Yes, uh, I do. With, with Altani. Yeah, so this is will be immediately sure. after you guys uh, disbanded. Well, not disbanded. Disassembled. Disbanded is a way worse. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Where did we go? No! <laughs> it's worse. That's the proper word. Thank you. Yeah, you go over to Tala with Altani and Tell. And she's in the middle of looking um, away, sort of towards... Not at Vincent and Celica directly, but in just in that direction. And she hears your approach and she turns and looks at you. She is... I will say she is clad in her gear right now. So, in theory, she is ready for a fight. Mm, mm. Mm, mm. Uh, so, yeah, he just uh, approaches, uh, makes eye contact, sort of lowers his head, raises his head back up, and he says, uh, Oh, Carla, thank you for coming. I hope you have... Had no shortage of shade and water since we last spoke. These times have been interesting. But do not worry. Shade and water are plenty. I would say the same for you, but I have heard things already. That things have not been so calm and tranquil with you. He, he rubs the back of his head and just nods. Uh, yes, in a word. Hmm. And you are... She looks at Tati, who's like, grinning ear from ear to ear, like an excited fangirl. Hi. She, like, immediately, like, gets on her, like, single knee, like someone about to propose marriage. I'm Altani. Uh, Altani, 